Link together the art of human connection. My name's Leanne Isaacson and I would like to welcome you today. So whether you're watching live on Facebook or whether you're on YouTube, um, welcome. So today I have Indiwerk Cummins from the Gold Coast um, joining me today. So Indua is passionate about empowering women and bring social change. And she's also uh, the ambassador for the League of Extraordinary Women. So welcome, Indua. Thank you very much for joining me today. Oh, thank you, Leanne. My pleasure. Um, so Indua, look, so you're on the Gold Coast. I'm here in, in Adelaide in South Australia. Um, and our producer, Rob, is in Baltimore in the US. So our worlds look absolutely, you know, poles apart. And so can you just, um, we have a, a map on the screen at the moment of, you know, where, e where each of us are. And again, I, it always amazes me that we can do these live shows and bring, you know, that I can bring amazing people to, um, to for everyone else to see. So can you just tell me a little bit about yourself and, and how you came to being on the Gold Coast and... That would be fantastic. Yeah, sure. Um, actually, it's interesting why you're talking about uh, us all being the three of us on um, the show here today, being from different locations. I definitely consider myself as a, a citizen of the globe and I love that technology has made the world a much smaller place. Um, we moved to the Gold Coast about 15 months ago after living at the coast of Bundaberg. Um, we lived there for... 12 years which we'd moved from the Canberra before that so we've we've lived in quite a few places oh there's our our backyard that was literally our backyard um where we lived in Bundaberg and it was a real lifestyle um quality of life move for us from there because we'd always had the beach and family at the top of our list of where we wanted to move to from Canberra which is probably as cold as Baltimore Rob um, and um, it, uh, it was uh, a lovely little town, it was about 50,000 people um, and uh, the girls, we've got two girls, they grew up pretty much um, rambling along the coastline there. They had sea cu cucumbers as their friends and they all had their names, manta rays, watched two little hatch, that was pretty much life there. So yeah, it was a great time but they're, um, they're older and um, now and my husband also travels a lot for work so the move to the Gold Coast was um, a bit of a practical one uh, just uh, to access uh, ease of travel with uh, one single plane trip as opposed to connecting flights to Bundaberg. But, yeah, loved our time there. Yeah. Um, and I know um, one of the things you and I were just talking about before is how we actually came to even know each other and it was it was through LinkedIn as, as, as pretty much everyone on my Link Together show um, has that's how I've connected with them but um, I was thinking the other day you know how do we actually connect and and I think it was a post that you'd actually put up that um, so you know we we were second level connections and just through one of my you know, connections that had either liked it or commented on it um, I came across your posts and and started to read some of them and and sort of looked at your profile and 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 then you know we we reached out to each other and connected so um like i said it was um it was one of those things and then we we had a skype call so the it um the the the, the linkedin may certainly um can bring us some amazing amazing connections um and i know when i was looking at your profile it, one of the things that struck me was you know like just the range of things that you've done over the time so you know you you got it like into property development um you know that must have been an interesting sort of you know a experience and i know that that was one of the things that you said that you were quite passionate about just yeah how did how did that happen um yeah yeah you're right actually if i if i look up everything up till now probably my time in, in property development was my favorite favorite um probably job if i call it that i haven't actually been an employee for 17 years i am totally unemployable um so actually i tried that and lasted two days and yeah yeah it didn't work um but uh yeah i had done the corporate thing earlier in sydney but yeah property development um i just i fell into it i think because i just had um my first child I knew I didn't want to go back to work um, and I actually originally had ideas of being an architect when I was at school. So I had always just, I guess, had that creativity and, and want to transform. So the strategy I worked with was 
was renovations. And I used to buy blocks of units um, and then try to title them, renovate them and sell them off one by one. Um, and I also did some, uh, I guess, selling development blocks so I'd get the DA approval in and then normally like, builders or developers would, would do the building part. So, so, yeah, so I did that for about 12 years. And then, um, and then you know, you know, silly stories you tell yourself in your head. I felt like I hadn't ever built a business, so that's when I decided to um, set up the recruiting business in Maritime and do executive recruitment in that space. Yeah, and that was actually going to be my going to be my next question. I mean, the I imagine pro- well, property development's not something that I have um, experience with, but I, you know, um, farming certainly is what I've uh, you know my experience. Um, from pretty much most of my life and you know and then looking at got you going into the the maritime recruiting that that would be probably a fairly male dominated um, area as as the the world that I worked within um, coordinating education for farmers and so you know that was very much a a male um, you know a male world so you know what how, how did you ma- how did you manage to um to you know like gain the the respect from the maritime perspective. How did you end up? How 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 did you fall into that? Yeah, I guess um, I guess the the whole male dominated world or all female dominated world has never been something that actually I guess enters my mind when I'm thinking of doing something. Because property was very male orientated as well, but then recruitment earlier was very female oriented. Um, Luckily, I didn't have a life and I spent Saturday nights watching YouTube clips after YouTube clips as to what azimuth drives do, what a a Z drive is and, yeah, all the fun stuff about vessels and different types of vessels and, yeah, just spending time with people. And LinkedIn was also really helpful at that time because I just connect with people that um, that look like they were, they were professionals in the field um, and just ask them questions or if I was in that city, I'd organise to meet with them. Um, so it was, uh, I probably would have found it really difficult actually um, without having that social media platform to make connections and learn. Yeah. So um, so how long have you been, how long have you been, been on LinkedIn? Like has it been like a, a number of years and how did you come to LinkedIn? Um, I did it when I started the maritime, um, maritime, um, the role, um, that business. Um, so it would be about seven years then, I think. Yeah, yeah, probably about seven years. But and I built up quite a number of connections. I had um, I had nearly six thousand connections, but I've actually been going through and culling some of those now because I, I just it's a different world that I'm operating now. You know, from maritime to a social enterprise and working with you know women in developing countries is like night and day and I know that there's some people from there that have followed me with my new I guess with my new views and, and the values that I'm putting out there with my content but um but yeah there's there's plenty there that I probably just we don't share the same same passions anymore so if you want to do more it, that yeah. it um it's actually interesting you know like because you know, the size the size network that I have and you know being on LinkedIn for 10 years so certainly you know there's a lot of people that I connected with, you know, early in the piece that um, that that certainly um, are probably not the con- not the 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 close connections that they were when I first um, joined. I mean, one of the the challenges is always trying to, you know, how you actually cull. So that sounds a terrible word, doesn't it? But um, you know, how you actually cull connections. You know, on LinkedIn, it's not the easiest um thing to do you know from a search you know how, how you actually do it but um but yeah that um that is interesting you know when you when you do sort of change career paths and that that connections aren't necessarily as relevant as what they were and um, so i was just going to say you're right maybe we should think of a more positive way of saying cull maybe it should be like um improve the quality connections as opposed to culling because that sounds yeah nasty <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know culling, and and you know, especially as a farmer, like you know, I, I from a from a culling <laughs> perspective, I probably have a completely different um, take on that as well. So, it yeah, yeah. Um, it certainly yeah. So no, um, improving quality of connections is a good way is is a good way of looking at it. Um, yeah. So as far as the, I know that you're involved in the the League of Extraordinary Women. How, how did that come to be? Yeah, uh, well, when I moved to the Gold Coast, moving to the Gold Coast was like a bit of a line in the sand for me. Lots of things changed for for when we came down here. And one of those was, um, I guess, releasing that role that I had in Maritime and um, 
And basically, um, I wanted to have connection with women. Uh, after being five years in that maritime environment, I knew I really needed to take that yin side of me. Um, so I just sought out different meets um, that had women. And yeah, there we go. There's a photo of me at one of my events. So um, so I t- started attending uh, as, a, as a guest and... Um, then the role came up for ambassador and the previous ambassador nominated me and I thought, yeah, that sounds great because I'd, I'd done events before and knew that I loved doing that. So I thought, well, that would be a great way for me to meet more people and um, and do something that I enjoy doing. So um, so this event that you've got up on the screen there was one that I did for, um, uh, it was a panel of um, social entrepreneurs. So you've got there three amazing women. One of them is um, Erica Bartle, the CEO of Outland Denim. And they actually um, produce denim in Cambodia and they've trained um, women that have been rescued from trafficking to sew. And I'm going to get emotional here. So it's pretty incredible what they do. They um, they source sustainably their denim from Turkey and don't use any toxic bleaches because denim is terrible. It's notorious for the amount of toxins that they use in their chemical process to dye the, dye the denim. Um, so, yeah, so they've looked at everything in their supply from the actual materials that they use to the process that they make and the labour that they use and the, I guess the difference that it makes in those the lives of those women that they employ because the problem they've had with rescuing traffickers in the past is that if they don't have any alternative employment to go to, it's really easy for them to, to go back into it. So that's that's what they're trying to do with them. Um, with their their whole um, aim of Outland Denim. The other two ladies are Mia Monroe and Kylie Lowe. Mia, they're locally, they're all local Gold Coast people too. Mia has an online education program to actually educate um, business owners or entrepreneurs or um, or people into, I guess, entrepreneur to use that term, that want to show how they can use a profitable model that still solve some social problems um, because I know, I know that was the question that I often had is how how does that work that you start actually helping the community um, mm. but it doesn't affect your bottom line um, and so there are ways that that actually happens and you know that sometimes I think being forced to think things differently you get creative about how you do it and actually ends up being profitable in many ways whether it's for people or um, the planet or financially uh, and the other lady Kylie Lowe um, she um, she has a, a social enterprise to help um, at youth risk, the risk youth that are at risk. <laughs> so, yeah, mm-hmm. Amazing as well. So yeah, so that was that was a really um, a really powerful night actually. Um, because I, I actually hadn't heard of the the League, League of Extraordinary Women before until I you know I, until I came across your um, you know and connected with you on LinkedIn. So. That is is an Australian, like is that's an Australian, um, oh, yeah. or, like organisation. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The movement started in Melbourne about five years ago by um, four women that were, I guess, making the change into the entrepreneurial startup space. Um, and they they met and found that they were all having the similar struggles of balance and how do you make this work. And um, so they just decided to. Um, meet together and the first meeting they just you know put it on Facebook they had 160 women turn up so they thought oh okay there's obviously a need here so um, the values are very much around real connections um, supporting each other not having a a competitive spirit it doesn't matter if you're the same industry we have these values around there's enough business for everyone Um, so uh, so yeah, if if you think the same way, then then that's that's the group that, that the league inspires, and I really like the culture of, of women that it's attracted. Um, it seems to have flowed out whether you're at the Gold Coast or the Brisbane or the Melbourne movement, or they're in California now too. Um, I don't know if I have an Adelaide movement. Maybe you can ring me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I did wonder that. I I sort of had a bit of a look, and um and and I haven't had enough chance to sort of dig too deeply to see whether there is, but um, I'd certainly love to be involved, but, you know, that that's a story for another day. Um, <laughs> so I know that, like, they they organise events, like there was the event in um, in Melbourne in July. Like, did you attend that? Oh, yeah, um, yeah, absolutely, in Melbourne that was Run the World. 
Um, I love that name. You can't help but sing Beyonce when you sing that, but I didn't hear that. But um, they had some great speakers there. There were 10 women that, that spoke. Um, and interestingly enough, a third of those speakers were from the Gold Coast area. Woo! So um, we actually have um, the two of the sisters that spoke at that Run the World event in um, Melbourne are going to speak for us here locally at the Gold Coast next week. Um, and that's Vic and Emma from The Beach People. And they have a global online business as well. Actually, if you've heard of the round beach towel that's fringed, they were the girls that invented that and now everyone's covered it. Oh. Um, so so how, many were, how many women were at that event in Melbourne? Oh, I think there's about 400. Uh, there was about 400 there and we get about uh, 80 people locally. Okay. Um, and how, so how often, are, like, how often are they held? Um, we do those events every six weeks. So um, so we've got the one yeah, next week um, here at the Gold Coast and then we've got one in um, at Christmas time, of course. So, so yeah, we, we found that every month was a little bit too much for people and, you know, just yeah. schedule six weeks worked really well. Yeah. So, so that probably leads me to I, I I'm not quite sure how much we talked about um, your you know where you where you were born and and grew up. So can you tell us a little bit about um, your your homeland? Okay, sure. Yes, I was I was born in Papua New Guinea. Um, my mum and dad were both teaching up there. So dad's Australian, so he'd gone up there to teach and, and mum mum was actually one of the first um, women to graduate as a teacher in Papua New Guinea, um, so, um, which is pretty amazing in itself that she came from a, a village and with no running water, no electricity, um, single, single father raised her and yet he saved up enough money to send her to teacher's college, which was in a time where even women in Australia were probably weren't being encouraged to actually get tertiary degrees. You know, it was the, it was the 50s, 60s. So, um, so yeah, um, my, my grandfather was definitely a man of, of vision. So he sent mum to teachers' college. The mum and dad met there. I was born in Papua New Guinea um, in Goroka in the Highlands. Um, but um, I only stayed there till I was about two or three. And so then pretty much I've grown up in Australia in lots of different locations. So I guess that's why I say when people ask where I'm from, it's, it's uh, you know, I'm a citizen of the globe, but my heart's in Papua New Guinea and I happen to live at the Gold Coast, which I, I love living here too. Um, so the um, so the town that, uh, so the area that you you grew up in and, and have the, you know, the connection to now, can you just tell us a little bit about that? Oh, yeah. My, my, my family, my, my people in Papua New Guinea are from Kokoda, um, and you may have heard of Kokoda in um, in World War II, um, the Kokoda Trial, where they had a number of infamous battles. So my family are landowners from, from that area. Um, so all my family from my mother's side still live there. And there. There's a picture on the screen there now. So they still live a traditional life of living off the land, eating what they grow. It's obviously all organic. Um, they wash in the river, um, laugh in the river, fish in the river. Uh, they have no electricity or running water. They do have solar lights now, but ironically, everyone has a mobile phone. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty crazy. They'll be, they'll be, you know, cooking at the fire in one hand and the mobile in the other hand. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, worlds colliding, worlds colliding. But because of uh, the... Um, I guess the, the resource sector that's moved into there, then communications is really important for them. So, you know, they've they've been happy to put the towers in, but but um, yeah, I guess the rest still is as as it was, you know, perhaps hundreds of, of years ago. That subsistence lifestyle. Um, so the I was just going to ask. So they they're your two girls in the photo. So who was the little boy? A little boy was my nephew, yeah. So my my cousins, my cousins are son. It's it's funny in Papua New Guinea um, language, we don't actually have a, a word for cousin. Um, it's all brother and sister. So the, the some it, it's like how we would choose, uh, I guess, brothers and sisters and nephews here is is exactly how they treat family in Papua New Guinea. That that second removal of cousin doesn't exist. Yeah, and so how often would you how often would you go back there? Oh, not enough, not enough, because I'll, I'll go to Port Moresby, which is the capital city of Papua New Guinea for work, um, but I won't travel over to my, my village as, as much as what I get up to Port Moresby. So I'm going up to Port Moresby again for work at the end of November, so I'm seeing how I might be able to duck in a couple of days back at the village. Yeah. 
That's and so, how, sorry, how far uh, how far is the village from Port Moresby? Uh, in kilometres, it's actually not that far because that's actually the trail that people walk is from Port Moresby to Kokoda. And so that's like a seven-day trip because it's incredible terrain. Like it's literally up and down mountains the whole way. Yeah. A 25-minute trip in a, uh, I guess it's a dash eight, yeah, that we go over there. But then once we arrive at Popendetta, which is the closest town to my village, then it's like a three-hour trip in a truck, which is like insane, you know, four-wheel drive type thing because there's no roads. Some of it's bitumen but um, but half of it's in dirt um, and uh, it's it's only 50 kilometres from Poppendetta to, to my village but it takes you yeah, about three hours in the truck. Yeah, it, um, and I must admit, um, just just thinking about you know the the Kokoda Trail, like my, I, I think I just said to you when we first were talking earlier that um, my great uncle, um, you know, was um, was you know did was involved in in the Kokoda Trail, and um, so it's certainly something that you know over my lifetime, you know, as a little kid, and you know, a couple of my one of my cousins, I remember talking to him about you know he was always quite keen to actually go back and walk the Kokoda Trail, you know, because of my Uncle Jack, you know, we, we heard about that as, you know, um, what, what, they, what they did when they were young. So, yeah, it, um, you know, when I saw that on, you know, I think on, on your profile or, you know, in, in our discussions, it certainly was something that, um, again, you know, is so far removed from my world, you know, here, you know, from a physical perspective, but it's certainly something that um, in in my heart is is pretty is is quite important. And um, so that so that probably leads me to asking, um, as far as your involvement and your plans to actually go back and and work with um, empowering women over in Papua New Guinea, can you just tell me tell us tell us about that? Yeah, I um <clears throat> over the last fifteen months since we moved to the Gold Coast, I. I stopped my work in, in recruitment and um, I'm really just been, I guess, spending time with the family and helping them adjust to the move here um, and also doing a lot of personal development myself and just seeing, I guess, what evolved because I knew that there was something bigger that I was going to do that, that certainly made a, an impact. And, and I knew that whatever I did, I guess, on a, on a financial reward basis, I wanted it to be something that actually made a change, not just, I guess, an enterprise. Um, and in the last month, uh, that's become, I guess it's come to me with two um, opportunities with working with education with my mother. She brings students down from Papua New Guinea to Australia uh, to attend our tertiary uh, I guess education here, universities and TAFEs. Um, but the, the, big, the bigger project that I'm going to be working on is um, with, my, with my business partner, Sukruti Nguyen, um, on setting up a, an event and a model for women in developing nations, um, you know, professional women, entrepreneurial women, um, and certainly those that want to be that and encouraging those skills around professional development and leadership. But the model that we set up in Papua New Guinea, um, we're going to roll out to developing nations around the world. So uh, so since Sukruti is from India, that will be our next stop. That that's, uh, like, and, and that to me is, that sounds so exciting. Um, and as far as you know, so so what will that what will that look like? Is that you know will that be an event? Will it be you know, what, what will that look like? Um, so from somebody say that was either wanting to from from an, another country support what you're doing, or you know from a, the the perspective of, of participants in um, PNG. So what will that look like? Yeah, there'll be. Um I guess there'll be, there'll be a, an opportunity for, for corporates to get involved um, in sponsorship um, as well as, uh, you know, we'll be talking with government bodies as well that, that really want to support the women's space. I guess globally people are really getting behind supporting women because I guess they know that, that when they empower a woman it has such a ripple and multiplier effect to um, the impact that it makes in a community. Um, women tend to be educators and, and teachers naturally. That's, that's part of us. So, so yeah, I know that. That, um, that certainly a lot of uh, companies and um, and the government are supportive of, of <clears throat> events that can have leverage to their investment in this space. So we're going to have a number of focuses because, you know, there's limitless subjects that we could talk on, but we really want to focus on personal development and empowerment. Um, you know, that's something that women in, in lots of developing nations, you know, really need um, with, I guess, a lot of them being to look typically misogynist societies. Um, we also um, want to um, support leadership 
um, and the qualities around leadership and um, it's that humanity of, of leadership too and, and setting examples and being strong examples in yourself before you, you, know, you lead others. Um, and really having a social outlook with entrepreneurship. So, so encouraging women to set up small businesses, whether they're solopreneurs and doing something for themselves or whether they go out and get other women and men together to set up businesses, but setting up businesses that can solve social problems because governments in developing nations, there's no way, well, even in the Western world, governments struggle to have enough in their budget to solve all the community problems, and that's why charities evolve. But the social entrepreneurship it has a lot more sustainable and long-term last, uh, I guess, long-term um, solutions by, by by solving those with a commercial model. So, so we'd really like to encourage women in developing nations to set that up. So, if if those values align with your company or I guess with the government department, then certainly we'd love to hear from you and, and see how we can work together in um in bringing these events and mentoring programs to to your country. Um, <laughs> And I think, you know, like the, the more that we've talked, you know, the more my, I mean, the way my mind works is thinking, okay, so now who do we, who do I know that, you know, could help uh, you know, facilitate that or who do I know that might be able to um, to have some ideas of funding? And um, so, so I know from, you know, sitting here thinking now, who, what connections have I got in, in Papua New Guinea? And, and I know I was actually looking um, <laughs> last night and, I think I've got four four first level connections in um in in New Guinea, and I think in my whole network there's about 117 thousand um yeah. in my you know in my LinkedIn network. So I'm sure that there's certainly some some people that um that I can do some connecting with. But um and I think you know like from from the perspective of being able to from being able to you know like both connect um funders but also you know to engage um you know people over in in both new guinea but also you know when you talk about india it um and you know other developing countries it's certainly a really exciting project um oh, you know, yeah. to to be doing so um from a time frame perspective like is that you know how long is that um going to be taking um We'd like to put the event on in Papua New Guinea in the first half of next year. So we're just, um, when I go over to, um, to Papua New Guinea in this visit in November, we're, <clears throat> and we have got some meetings with, with corporates and governments that we already know want to be involved, I guess we'll be looking at, at perhaps um, looking at, at, at their perspectives. So there's also a major event that APEC is meeting in Papua New Guinea next year, um, plus Sukuruti, who I work with. She's got two global events that she also is involved in next year in Geneva and Paris. So... We've kind of got to fit in with a couple of those things, but we definitely like to be in the first half of next year. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, so, as yeah, uh, there, there's probably lots of other things. Um, so, as far as so, just just thinking about the League of Extraordinary Women, is that um, is is the league involved in in anything that you're doing over there, or is this just um, in your own right? Uh, this will be our own initiative, um, developing nations. Um, it's a really different perspective and um, very different, <clears throat> I guess, very different focus as to what we need to deliver deliver in, in that space. So, um, so yeah, this is something that we're, we're building specifically for women in, in those sorts of countries and environments. And with the, with the experience that Socrates had, Socrates only moved to Sydney uh, four months ago. Um, prior to that, was living in India and had done um, similar programs for uh, encouraging women to enter politics um, and also around education in, um, in, in really regional, um, I guess I hate the word poverty stricken, but um, yeah, really regional areas that, that needed um, that. So she's, she's been at the grassroots um, of that. So her input will be invaluable as will be the input that we're getting from speaking with women because we want to make sure that it's relevant. And we certainly don't want to have the approach, I guess, of that colonial uh, type type. Uh, I guess approach where we come in and thinking that we know all the answers that's not it at all we really want to partner with the women um really want to understand you know where they're at and and what they best would um would uh, gain the most value from and then I guess bring what we can to work with that because one of the things that I think strongly we want to have as a, a fourth pillar to our um to our movement is a connection to traditions and a connection to culture 
because I think whether the, whether you're a partner of a law firm or whether you're setting up a, a grassroots traditional arts business, I really believe that that connection to where you come from is integral to going forward as, as an individual. And it's individuals that we're going to empower to go forward and make their own changes just one woman at a time. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm, I must admit I, I, I almost want to end on that statement. Um, but one thing, sorry, just taking back a, a couple of steps was, so how did you actually meet? So how did you come to be involved with Suki? Um, I'm a really strong believer in, the, in, in, in pulling your tribe. Um, it's a, it's, I guess it's a, it's a common term that, that's used at the moment and I really believe that the right people that need to support you in, in what you're doing will, will, will be attracted to you. So she just randomly contacted me on LinkedIn and we, um, I looked at her profile and I thought, oh, wow, there's a lot of commonalities there. So we organised, a little bit like yourself, we organised a time to, to talk on the phone and it was, it was a 90-minute conversation with which every single thing that we both said to each other, we were just like, oh, yes, oh, yes, and oh, what about? And, um, you know, if she was a man, I'd probably marry her. But um, oh, actually, I'm actually already married. I can't do that. Okay, bigger me. Um, so, um, so, yeah, we, um, she... I guess we were in very similar situations that we had. She'd cut off her. She's she's amazing. She runs a data and robotics company in India and was voted one of the five top women in tech to watch in India. And if you know how strong the IT culture is in India, that's no mm -hmm. mean feat. So, um, and she's also on the global uh, committee for women in communications forum that meets in Geneva every year. So she's, um, you know, she's got that same global outlook she loves to events she loves women and she um and she has a, a heart and an intention that's the same as mine that's about making a change and the rest will follow um, which is something that was very important to me because often people are motivated by different things um, and our motivation is certainly around change and women and whatever happens from there happens from there um, that it just um, it's it's just an amazing story and and I think you know it, it probably reminds me of of again you know how you and I connected it was was one of those you know looking looking at a post um, and feeling like there was there was certainly an alignment and um, it you know and, and again that just shows the absolute power of LinkedIn and you know I I certainly say, so many times how lucky we are to live in in an age with the technology that enables us to connect um, and really form deep connections and relationships with people no matter what the geography no matter what the background no matter what the age you know no matter what the industry you know we are just so fortunate that that we have the ability to um to connect with with people that we would never in a million years you know come come across um you know at, at all so yeah. um i i think that um yeah it it yeah. certainly is just it certainly is amazing it, it's interesting it's um i, I was uh, just talking with rob this rob about this before that it's almost like that platforms like linkedin or um i guess blab where you and rob met um it's almost like it gives humans permission to do what innately we want to do as humans which is connect and somehow in our society and in the outside world there seems to be a fear attached to talking to strangers and connecting with them in the way that online you feel like you've been allowed to do that because I imagine if you and Rob had sat on a train and you just started chatting and talking about craziness and you used your perspective word 10 times, you'd probably just think you were free. So, um, yeah, I, I love that, that uh, whatever allowances uh, these social platforms have given us have allowed us to connect to what humans really want to do. I don't have no. I, on the other hand, have no trouble talking to strangers, and my girls always give me a hard time about. Oh, of course you picked up that hitchhiker and brought them home, and they're staying with us for two days. And yeah, talking to the lady at the bus stop that is now coming along to your event at the League of Extraordinary Women. But yeah, that's the puppy guinea way. Well, I, I'm not quite sure whether it's. Um, 
I, I think it it might also be a um, a country. Uh, you know that that reminds me. I do that all the time. You know, I was sitting on a plane coming back from I don't know Sydney, I think, and I happened to be sitting next to a, a girl from the US, and somehow you know started talking to her, and well, she was coming to see a friend of hers that had just moved to Adelaide, and so I said, oh look, that's okay. I'll um you know we can take we can take you down to her place because she was going to be catching a bus into the city and then another bus out. So, you know, my daughter picked me up and and so there was two of us, you know, this this other person in the car and I said, oh, it's all right, I just met her on the plane and, no, we'll drop you there. So um, it certainly, you yeah, know, I had no problem talking to strangers either. And and hence, you know, from a, from a LinkedIn perspective, it, um, you know, as far as, you know, connecting with people and, you know, I, I always figure you just... You just never know, you know, someone's story or, you know, how you might be able to help someone or how you can connect and, and whether it be um, from, a, from a professional level, a personal level, whichever, you know, and, and the two are, are so intricately entwined, you know, mm-hmm. being professional and being personal. And, you know, I think that, you know, at the moment the way that, um, that LinkedIn has changed just even in the last couple of months, you know, with the advent of being able to actually upload video and, you know, we really now have the ability to to really show people who we are and um, and show your personality and, you know, not that you have to reveal everything that you have for dinner and, um, and what you did on the weekend, but, yeah. you know, it certainly is, you know, being able to share personal stories and connect on a human-to-human basis is really what the platform yeah. has, has now, you know, developed into. Yeah. Even there, there is no B to C. You know, people used to say B to B, B to C anymore. There is no B to B anymore. It's, it's people to people. People want to do business with people that that they they like, and and it's it's another reminder of being really authentic and and true in in your content that you post in the in the profile that you have. You know, put it out there as to who you are. And I think that was something that I struggled in my maritime life. I really felt like I was this, you know, this this you know, woman that could speak the language and was, you know part of the, the the maritime world but you know inside I had really strong motivations around changing the world and humanity and you know social change so which was why I, I do what I do now and had the 15 month break of, of doing nothing so so yeah it's, it's really important to just I guess bring your whole self to you know your business or whatever it is that you do. Um, I must admit I laugh when you say you know 15 months of doing nothing um, I I actually was was working for a um, a, a cancer center for eighteen months, and and I've actually just done the opposite, jumped out of that, and got back into you know being who I am and and being able to help as as many people in my passion and connecting, and so you know it, um, it it's an interesting parallel where you 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 know you say you've been doing nothing for fifteen months, but effectively I'm sure you haven't been doing nothing. Yeah, mother of two teenage daughters that are, yeah, sporting mad, social mad, taxiing everywhere and the Ambassador League of Extraordinary Women and Ambassador of Miyako and, yeah, yeah, other stuff, but, yeah. <laughs> well, look, thank you. I'm not quite sure from a time perspective, but um, I, you, you and I could probably sit here and, and talk all day and go off on all sorts of different tangents and we could well and truly change the world without a doubt. Um, but look, so thank you. So um, now if, if people would like to get in touch with you as far as um, supporting what you're doing over in, in you know, whether with the, the League of Extraordinary Women but also with the work that, um, that you and Suki are about to, to embark on over back in Papua New Guinea and also India. So if people wanted to get in touch with you to either you know, provide support from a financial perspective or, or you know, how they can support you and, and support the women in both those countries. So how can they get in touch with you? Oh, look, we, we haven't even set up our web page yet. So so really probably probably the easiest way is LinkedIn because there's only one Indua Cummings on there, I-N-D-U-W-A. Um, and, um, yeah, if, if the, the, the message of, of what we're trying to do um, with, with women on a global scale and developing nations brings true with with what you'd like to to do and however you may feel like you'd like to support it then love to hear from you fantastic well look thanks so much um it's just been an absolute pleasure and um and i'm so glad that um i had a first level connection that was connected to you that um i i was able to come across your post and that we could connect so thanks very much um again 
thank you to Rob Hicks, um, who is our wonderful producer, who has given me an absolute hard time today because I'm not quite sure whether anyone's noticed, but I tend to say the word perspective a lot. And so it's been brought to my attention. So Rob, very kindly in the background, has got a cup who's been <laughs> dropping coins into that cup every time that I've said the word perspective. So <laughs> Yeah. Today, every now and then, you know, I look like I've lost a fraction of train of thought. It's because there's been a coin <laughs> dinging in the background that no one else can hear, only Indra and I. So, um, so anyway, yeah, thanks very right. much, Rob. You've just been a gem today and provided us with all sorts of entertainment. <laughs> so, look, again, thanks very much, um, you know, for, for viewing the, the show linked, in, linked together, The Art of Human Connection Live. For anyone that's watching the recording, Look, thanks very much for watching and I look forward to bringing some, some amazing guests again in the coming weeks. And again, Indua, thanks so much. It's been Pleasure. fabulous. Thank so you. if anyone wants to connect with me, um, connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, so Leanne Isaacson on LinkedIn. And if anyone has any suggestions for, for guests for my Link Together show, um, I'd be more than happy to, you know, to, to have people suggested and we've had some amazing guests up until now. I mean, one of the things that um, probably a lot of people don't know is that um, Bill, the um, from Alaskan Viewpoint Lodge in, uh, in, in Fairbanks in Alaska, as a result of um, the, the show that, that I did with Bill, um, a connection of mine on LinkedIn happened to see the uh, the interview and was planning to go to Alaska, so actually connected with Bill um, and has booked at the Alaskan Viewpoint Lodge. So, um, so you know, the the while the show, um, I you know, I have amazing guests, but you know, there's certainly been some some outcomes that probably weren't expected when when I first started doing it. So, my aim is really just to to show that LinkedIn is 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 a professional platform, but certainly. Um, is is built of uh, is 500 million humans on on LinkedIn and, and it's about actually how we 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 connect and how we bring that human aspect into our professional um, and personal world. So again, thanks very much, and I look forward to bringing you another great show next week.